All right, video number two on the effects of partial throttle boost in relation to knock retard. What we're looking at here is your open loop fuel air. This is your air to fuel ratio. It's your target air fuel ratio for what your PCM is trying to achieve. A uh, ratio of 14.7 is the standard for cruising, and 11.7 is usually what you want to achieve for pump gas. Um, 14.7 being way too lean at wide open throttle, but being just right for cruising. 11.7 being what you want at wide open throttle because you need a lot more fuel, especially in boost. RPM, self-explanatory, manifold, absolute pressure. Your map pressure is the pressure that your map sensor is sending to your PCM, telling you what the pressure is inside your intake manifold, essentially how much you're boosting or how much vacuum you're in. Um, when it is greater than your barometric pressure, you're actually boosting. When it is less than your barometric pressure, like you see right now, you're still in vacuum. And your ratio is when it is 1.0 or greater, then you're boosting. Less than that, you're in vacuum. Throttle position. Throttle position around 3.7 or 3.8 volts indicates wide open throttle. As you see here, this is cruising. Your throttle position is not very much. And we we enter our partial throttle boost right here. This owner right here is at partial throttle, 3.3. And that's his maximum throttle right there for this log, which is horrible because when you're at wide open throttle, you need to go beyond a threshold where your computer recognizes, okay, I'm at wide open throttle. I need to do a few things. Some of those things are lower the timing from your cruising timing and increase your target air to fuel ratio so that you can have the optimum running conditions for wide open throttle. Knock short term retard. Short term knock retard is your computer's reactive knock retard. It is saying something's wrong somewhere, be it fuel, timing, boost, whatever, and there's too much timing, so I'm gonna throttle the timing back a little bit. And that's called short-term knock retard. It is reactive. Long-term knock retard is proactive. It's when your computer says, okay, I recognize a couple of problems here and there at whatever RPMs, and I'm going to program knock retard into what I've learned about the way the car is operating so that nothing goes wrong. And that's actually stored and will be saved in your computer, just like your fuel ratios and everything. Um, until your computer is ultimately reset, usually by disconnecting the negative battery cable for a few minutes. And your actual spark. Um, this is how we measure our timing. Right now our timing is at 15.5 degrees timing advance, and you'll see that change throughout this log here. So what we'll do is we'll go through here. At 0.9, and the throttle position input right now we have we're cruising. As you can see when you're cruising your timing's in the 30s and 40s and your target air to fuel ratio is in the 14s. That's normal. Everything's going fine. Your manifold absolute pressure is below barometric pressure. We're still in vacuum here until right here. From this frame we're in vacuum. This frame we're in boost. Notice your manifold absolute pressure is less than the barometric pressure, meaning we're in vacuum, greater than barometric pressure. Now we're in boost. Now that we are in boost, the computer is going to need to reduce the timing. It's also going to need to in increase the air to fuel ratio. However, our throttle position is still very low. Keep in mind 3.7, 3.8, that's wide open throttle. We're only at 2. So the computer thinks we're still cruising. As you can see, we start getting short-term knock retard. We ha don't have enough fuel, we have too much timing, and we have too much air. We have too much boost, essentially. So, as we increase the boost, we are also going to increase the knock retard, be it short-term knock or long-term knock. After we get... You can see after... The throttle position is increasing, and the boost is increasing right here. 2.1 volts at 20.3, 2.4 volts, 
2.7 at 25.1. The boost is going up, the throttle position is going up, and the knock retard is going up. All because this person's this person is in short. Uh, this person is in partial throttle boost. Sorry about that. Got a couple of uh, beers. So uh, our timing's too high in the 30s. If you could hold 30 degrees of timing at wide open throttle, you've got an excellent tune, or you're on E85 and your name's Nick. But um, the shameless plug there. We're going up in map. We're going up in throttle position. We're going up in knock retard. This is horrible. This is not the way you want to drive your SRT4. Not the way you want to drive a turbocharged vehicle at all. As you can see, our target air to fuel ratio is still 14.37. 14 is extremely lean for wide open throttle. Even on E85. That's ridiculous. So as the throttle position increases, you can see it goes up to 3.3 there. It starts to say, oh, um, we're getting close to wide open throttle. Let's reduce the air to fuel ratio, giving us a richer ratio. Let's reduce the timing right there. As you'll see, we're still going down, ultimately. However, the short term knock retard is lowering the timing for you. It is being reactive to the conditions in the vehicle. As we fast forward through this data log here, you see the throttle position. Let's wait for it to increase. And you will see that the long term knock retard starts to get stored after a while. Oh, we're boosting again. See we're at 14.4 map. And the next frame, right here, we are boosting now. And enter the long term retard, if you didn't already see it. That is proactive knock retard. The computer recognizes there's a problem somewhere, and it's going to automatically retard your timing. Nothing you can do about it except reset your PCM. So our timing starts going down while our air to fuel ratio stays the same. Our throttle position gently increases as does the knock retard. Now we're at 1.5 degrees knock retard long term and 2.5 short term. And it just keeps going from there. You see he lets off the throttle here. The throttle position is going to go down in the next frame as well the map pressure right there. So this is the effects of partial throttle boost and what it does. And if you want to slow this video down, you can see for yourself. He does it a few times here. If you look right here, I've shown a graph right here. This pink line here this pinkish line right here. When it exceeds the purple line, the purple line being the barometric pressure, he is boosting. As you see when he's boosting, timing starts to go down. His throttle position is increasing because he's boosting. Or the other way around. And enter the knock retard. Both short term and long term. You see they spike right there? Because his manifold absolute pressure is exceeding his barometric pressure. He does it in a couple spots and you will see that his knock retard mirrors that partial throttle boost. And you can see that in a couple of different points right here. He just barely right here goes into boost and you see he's already got the long term retard there and if you notice that long term knock retard and the absence of the short-term knock retard. That long-term knock retard is preventing the occurrence of short-term knock retard, being the difference between reactive and proactive knock retard. This is O3 Red SRT4. I'm still looking for some tips on the video so I can make a final one and make a good one for you guys. So everybody at srtforums.com, enjoy, and give me some feedback. Bye.